Welcome to Horsepower. In today's episode, I carry on the transformation of my GT86 into a competition stage rally car. If you haven't seen my previous episodes, please go back and watch those. Today we'll be focusing on the brakes and suspension. Here we have the old coilover compared to the new coilover. So as I mentioned earlier, this is from an Evo 5 or something. And it's actually reasonably similar in terms of length. Not exactly, it is a bit longer, but that's alright, I actually want it a bit longer, um, so we get more travel. Um, so the next thing we need to do is I'm going to remove the springs. I'd actually like to uh, measure the factory uh, GT86 spring rate and compare it to what I've got. Um, and then once we get the, the shortened shock lengths and the extended shock lengths, I can make up a jig off this factory coilover. And then what we'll do is we'll lop these bits off and I'll place my cut some new ones and we'll weld them on. Um, so the idea is, is that it'll sit probably roughly the same ride height as the factory car, maybe a touch higher, but have a lot more um, droop travel, which would be quite handy for rallying. Um, the factory car doesn't have a lot of travel, so it is something that needs to be improved for taking it off road. I've drawn up the mounting brackets for the struts and drawn them up in CAD and then we're going to simulate the cutting here for the CNC plasma. Looks good to me. ground the ears off the strut. Now it's time to put it into the jig. So this is the jig here. I've installed the coil over here without the spring. So what I'm checking here is clearance for things like the sway bar. Uh, make sure that doesn't rub on the body. Seems all good. And what I'm going to do is put a wheel on it and then move it up and down in the wheel well. Make sure the wheel doesn't touch on anything. And just and the other important thing is to make sure that the um, all the ball joints don't um, overextend and bind up. So right now it's on full droop, which is a fair bit more than the factory car. So those um, those rubber bush bushes are sort of stressed a bit further, um, but the ball joint isn't maxed out, so that's okay. Um, everything else seems all good. I still need to do a um, brake mount, so while that's on there, I'll make a plan for that and then I'll probably get rid of that which will no longer be used. Here's the wheel on the car with the jack underneath and I've wound it up to full compression and if we can see through there that is the the shock at maximum compression on the bump stops. The bump stop is internal in the shock so you can't see it and there's oodles of clearance um, even hopefully, I'll try it, is turn it full lock to lock 
and see if anything hits. So yeah, that's full lock. Still oodles of clearance. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So you can see how much travel we got there. A fair bit more than factory. Here are the completed front coilovers. So these mounts are all welded on and also a anti-roll bar mount and a brake hose mount. And I'm using the factory top hats for now. They should be pretty reliable and basically with the time I've got they were just the easiest to make work. Interesting note about these springs is that they're a non-linear spring so they're like a beehive shape so they're quite soft at the, at the top and the bottom and then um, sort of a lot firmer in the middle so this will I'm not entirely sure what the idea is whether they're sort of uh, a caper spring or more of a dual rate so you'll you'll use the softer spring under sort of softer loads and then compress the the firmer spring with more load not too sure also I don't know if the spring rate is going to be suitable um, for the weight of the car so these are designed for an Evo which which are a bit heavier than the Wii GT86 um, my car will end up a bit heavier in the front when I put the the bigger H6 engine in it um, so we'll see how they go they might be right they might not be perfect um, so that's something to play around with um, in the future um, so what I'll left to do now as you can see here is I'm going to mask them off and give the base a paint so they don't rust up and then they can go into the car Now that the front coilovers are all done, it's time to turn our attention to the rears. So these are the MCAs that I bought and they should just bolt in, almost. I'll show you shortly, but first let's rip the old ones out. Now that I've ripped out the factory coilover, we can compare them with the brand new MCAs that I bought. So to start off with, they are slightly longer, which is to be expected, more droop travel. And we can see these funny looking top hats that they've got. And so what that does is effectively, effectively give more uh, bump travel upwards. Um, so basically there's more bump and rebound travel um, as you'd expect. Now these are a pretty trick unit so we've got three, they're three way adjustment so we've got our bump adjustment down here the inner, inner one is the slow speed which is probably the most um, the most sensitive and the most one you, that you'd adjust um, so if, if you're not aware of how you adjust shocks and how they work the slow speed is the, the cornering and when it comes to speed it's the speed of the, um, the shock or the damper rather than the speed of the car so when you're turning a corner and doing driver inputs that's um, slow speed and then the high speed is the outer nut which you turn which um, will be something like hitting a bump or um, when the wheel goes up really fast from hitting a curb on a racetrack or, or something along those lines and then at the top here we have the rebound adjustment which is the 3mm allen key and so there's a lot to play around with there and to be honest I'm, <laughs> I'm not the expert in, in adjusting these things um, I'll probably go with um, the settings that MCA recommend um, as a good starting point so they give you all this helpful helpful data to help set, set them up which is pretty cool and the only reason they won't bolt in they're very close is due to these big top hats here for extra travel 
So I've just got to enlarge the hole in the top of the car. So we can see like it's got double it's double skinned here, so that hole there is big enough, but then that one there is too small. I am unsure about how I'm gonna go about doing this, but I'm guessing a hole saw and a drill might be the easiest option. Um, but yeah, I'll have a bit of a think. It just so happens that this hole saw is the perfect size to fit in that hole. Because I've used a spacer behind the front wheel, I want to even it out and put a spacer behind the back wheel, otherwise it'll look kind of funny and I probably also need the spacer to clear the, the brakes in the back as well. Before I do that, I wanted to put a spacer on and take the spring off the shock and then run the wheel through its travel uh, to make sure that the spacer doesn't kick the wheel too far out and it rubs on the guard. Probably nothing annoys me more than guard rub. Um, so it's sitting here at full droop and it's actually st sticking out a bit so it looks kind of wide. Um, I'm hoping that when we jack it up um, it'll gain negative camber and tuck the wheel in. So let's do that and see what happens. So that wheel is now fully bottomed out, full compression. Let's see if the wheel spins, and it does. So that's pretty sweet. There is oodles of clearance. That sits reasonably nice and flush. That's with a 25mm spacer. So that really couldn't have worked out much better. We did, I did just notice from Jacking it up is that there is a lot of toe change or bump steer depending on what you want to call it. So as the wheel go through, it goes through its travel, it either toes in or toes out. And they are well known for doing this. That might be something I need to look at uh, at a later date. Um, I'm not surprised because when you look at the, um, the geometry arrangement and you see the back arm is way longer than the front arm, then you you know that the wheel's not gonna stay perfectly straight as it goes through its travel. Um, and the other thing is that there's a lot of camber change as well, and that may not be something we want on gravel. We probably want a little bit, um, but this is maybe too much. I can show you the, um, the amount of bump steer as the wheel drops down. So, I don't know if that was obvious, uh, but what happens um, as the wheel compresses it toes in, and so what that does is that stabilizes the rear um, under traction, which is, which is a good thing, particularly for a, uh, a road car. So when you put your foot down, it squats and toes in and gives you stability in the back. Um, this is how it is. So and the, the factory has designed it in that way uh, for a reason. Down the track I will possibly make my own suspension geometry or maybe try and tweak the geometry that's on it with different length arms or something like that. But for now we need to get a baseline so I'm just going to use the full factory geometry as it is. We've got some good dampers in there, we'll get a good alignment on it and see how it goes. That's the coil over all installed. Looking like a proper rally shock. 
everything bolts up nicely everything clears the only thing I had to do was bend the brake hose bracket um, because there's more travel in the stamper it droops down more and it pulled on this a bit too much so I just had to bend that one up a little bit so that was easy enough and I'll probably delete all of that crap so all in all pretty happy um, let's hope they perform in terms of the ride height I've just set it at that for now and then I'll set it down on its wheels at some point and we'll no doubt have to change it I would say it's probably going to sit too low so I'll have to raise it up a wee bit anyway we'll cross that bridge when we get there and as well as as well as the front ones being in the rears are all in as well so as you'd expect they bolted in really nicely as well nice and shiny definitely some proper rally stuff so I'm just waiting on the diff to get back so I can put that in and then finish up the rear end so yeah I'm quite quite keen to see how these handle moving on we're going to have a look at some brakes I might have mentioned earlier that I'm going to delete the brake booster the reason being is that you get more of a consistent feel as you go through the the corner you often use left foot braking so you have brake and accelerator on and because the brake booster uses the vacuum from the engine you get varying um, brake assist um, depending on your level of throttle um, so I find the best that way to, the best way to sort that out is just to delete the booster entirely and then to get back our mechanical advantage I then redrill the brake pedal pivot in a different place and this has worked really well for me in the past and hopefully it'll, it'll work well for this now we can't just delete the booster and then put the master cylinder straight on the firewall it needs like a little adapter plate so a piece of aluminium here so that'll get chopped to shape get some holes drilled in it and um, obviously a big hole in there and then we'll have some studs going through to mount the um, the brake pedal assembly and then we'll mount the brake booster so that obviously takes the place of that and then quite conveniently two of the bolts are on the same axis as the as the master cylinder so that hopefully will work out nicely we've got the uh, the brake pedal assembly out of the car and so what we're going to do is change the ratio of this pedal to give us more mechanical advantage so I've obviously got the top pivot hole and the bottom of the pedal where you press it and the pivot hole which presses on the master cylinder so if we move that hole closer towards the pivot then that'll give us more leverage um, unfortunately if we move it too far that way um, the angle on the push rod will be too much and it won't push on the master cylinder nicely um, so we probably get away with maybe one hole over maybe 10 mil difference but if we want to drill um, another hole further down then it's probably not going to work so what we need to do is then drop this pivot on the on the bracket here so drill another hole there so what I'll do is I'll drill a hole there and a hole there and that gives me three different options to choose from and then I'll drill another hole here and then that'll give us two options to choose from here and then what we also need to make sure is that this little stopper presses on that nicely and then what I'm also going to do is chop off this pedal and weld on a bigger one which is just from a, an automatic brake pedal uh, what this does is it just gives you more room um, so you don't miss the pedal when you're in a hurry and want to stop so I quite like bare foot braking um, so it just means that no matter what foot is coming across to um, to press on it you're less likely to miss it um, when I do that it's probably going to get a bit friendly with the clutch pedal so I'll probably need to move the clutch pedal over a little bit as well to um, just make sure that I'm not going to press the clutch and the brake at the same time 
there is the modified pedal bracket. So here is the extra hole, and so I can choose between them. And the pedal has three holes, so again we can choose between those. And what I had to do, because the booster, which usually sits here relative to the, the pedal assembly, has its own stop, so the pedal can't go back further than it should. Um, so obviously I've deleted the booster, so I had to weld in this We stop here. That bolt's going to be too long, but we'll swap that out for a shorter one. And obviously here is the master cylinder. You can see where the push rod pushes on there. And the push rod is integrated into the booster socket to make a new push rod. So this is just machined out of a piece of 10mm stainless. Thread on one end and turned down with the ball on the other. So that will go in there. And then that will go into the pedal like so. It's a wee comparison between the old brakes and the new. So the standard GT86 has got a solid rotor, single pot caliper, and then I'm upgrading to a vented rotor and twin pot. Interestingly enough, the, the pad in the twin pot is actually bigger than the one in the single pot. Um, so hopefully I'm actually upgrading it rather than making it worse. Um, Obviously these are just factory Subaru stuff, so um, pads are pretty easy to get hold of. And so obviously this caliper doesn't bolt on, so it's got this um, adapter bracket thingy, which is, looks nicely machined. Good news, it does clear the brakes. There's actually reasonably healthy clearance through there. So these wheels here, I also run on the Celica. So I'm trying to use the same wheels rather than go out and buy several other brand new sets of wheels. We're going to rip out the ABS module and simplify all of the brake lines so that'll save us some weight, save us some plumbing and so the plan is with the master, the master's got two outputs and so one output will go to the front brakes, it'll tee off and the other one will go to the rear and it'll go through the firewall to the brake bias adjuster then to the handbrake, then down to the back, then tee off to the brakes. Now that our brake system is pretty much all done, uh, the last thing to do is put some decent brake pads in it. Uh, these brakes came with some brake pads which who knows what kind they were, probably safe to assume they, they weren't a race spec pad. So I've got these, 
These are Dixel brake pads. Uh, I've used these in previous rally cars and they always work really well. Got these from Brake Tech, so thanks Dave. Let's put them in. That's the brakes all done. I bled them. There appears to be no leaks, so hopefully they go well. Basically, the entire system has changed, so there's going to might be a bit of testing to to get it perfect. Uh, what I've also done is put on the spacers for good. Uh, I had a bit of a conundrum about what spacers to use. So obviously, this is um, like a Subaru chassis, so they use Subaru hubs. So you could easily get. Subaru spacers which um, which bolt straight on and have the right centre bore. Unfortunately um, this centre bore here uh, won't fit all of my wheels that I use on the Celica which is a slightly smaller Toyota centre bore which is 54 and the Subaru's 56. So I want to use all of my existing wheels. I thought it would make sense to use a Toyota spacer machine out the inside to fit over the the factory centre bore and then I can use both Subaru and Toyota wheels um, with this centre bore here and so um, unfortunately that does change well fortunately or unfortunately depending on how you look at it the stud pattern um, so these Toyota spaces come with Toyota um, studs which is a 1.5mm pitch um, so it just means that I just need to use Toyota wheel nuts on it um, the problem is if I ever need to take off the spacer to fit a different size wheel there'll be a bit of faffing around with wheel nuts and stuff. The other option is to actually just change these studs and press these out and replace them with Subaru ones which is a bit of mucking around as well. Um, but for now, um, basically I'm hoping that these spacers never need to come off and they will just use all of my current wheels that fit my Celica and got some brand new uh, wheel nuts to suit that 1.5mm thread pitch. We have the diff back from the diff shop. It looks really nice. They've done a really sweet job. It's all been sandblasted and painted. And the front pulley all nicely cleaned up. Brand new seals. It's virtually a brand new unit, obviously. Uh, brand new crown wheel pinion. Um, 4.5 ratio. Um, so hopefully it is a good thing. Uh, let's put it in the car and get this rear end all wrapped up. That concludes this episode. Uh, in the next one we will finish up the car and test it on gravel. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you then.